Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, and this is my March 2025 SAT predictions video. So I'll tell you everything that's gonna be on the test like I always do, but really this is a prediction video for every th test that you ever will take with the SAT. It works for the May, the, the June, the August, anything. It's gonna keep working, so I'm gonna keep posting it most likely. Now for people who have been watching my channel for a while, you are already doing the best thing you can do to predict what's gonna be on the test. You are thinking about the different topics, you are seeing the different topics that will appear again and again and again. So make sure that with whatever time you've got left before the SAT, visit my channel homepage, look at the lessons on each topic, watch the strategy reviews one more time, learn uh, the, the practice test through the practice test reviews. There's so much there on the channel homepage. It is definitely a great place to go to get everything you need for the test. So now what I'm about to say doesn't really apply to my subscribers who have been watching me all along. You should still keep watching this video for the main point that I'm about to make, but this thing that I'm about to say is not really about you because I'm assuming you're watching this video because you already know that I give good advice. But to the new people who have never watched me before and clicked this video, you're a bit of an idiot and it's gonna cost you points on the test. Now I know that's kind of mean, but let me explain what I'm trying to say here, okay? This was the thumbnail for this video. Why did you click this? This looks ridiculous. Look at this stupid face that I am making. You should not have trusted that face to tell you important things about the SAT and to improve your score. Plus, this part at the bottom here, this is an obvious trap. All passages correct in only six minutes. If you've been practicing, you know that that is just impossible. So let me be very clear here, I lied to you with this. That, that is impossible to do. I cannot get all passages correct in six minutes. That is not going to happen. But even if you thought for one second that that was true, that that was a possible strategy that would work, you are in danger of losing a lot of points on your real SAT for this exact same reason. You are falling for obvious traps and the SAT has tons of them. And some people are just very, very susceptible to traps on the SAT, on YouTube, in real life, in all sorts of ways. And being able to sense when you are getting tricked is an important skill for the SAT and for real life. So let me show you how the SAT does this and we can see how we might be able to prevent it. So this is a pretty simple question. Uh, this is not really a spoiler of anything. I wrote this question, but it, the SAT definitely has similar ones again and again and again. This is a very common thing, so don't be surprised if you see something like this. Let's say this is number 17 in either of the math modules, okay? So we'll read it. Which of the following represents the result when the positive number K is increased by 340%? Okay, so many of you are gonna feel really good about this one. This is just converting percentages into decimals, so you move the decimal place two points, so then we get 3.4 as our decimal version of 340. And that is true, but that is the trap answer. A is not right. And that's because this is a hard question. You, you should see this coming. There's going to be more to this. And so it's not much more. If you have been watching my channel, then you have hopefully learned about the open formulas. I have a really great lesson on that. That's how we work with percentage questions. For a question like this, we're gonna need the one plus or minus formula because we have an increase. So we're just gonna plug in what we know. The O is the original value. That is the, the K that we are told to focus on. And then one plus because it's an increase in percent. And then yes, P uh, represents the percentage as a decimal and 340% is 3.40 as a decimal, so that's fine, and that's going to give us the results or the uh, N, which is the new value. So if we just simplify that, we realize now that we have to multiply K by 4.40, which would give us choice B, the real answer, and that's not much different from what we thought it was going to be. But this is a perfect encapsulation of what the SAT is doing in all sorts of places. Now, in one sense, this isn't a hard question at all. It should still only take you 30 seconds if you're doing it right but a very large portion of people are gonna get this wrong because they aren't thinking about potential traps. And that can happen on all modules and all topics. This question, choice A especially, it was too easy. You should have sensed that something was wrong and that the question was going to be much harder, right? It's a number 17. We know that that's supposed to be a hard question. We'll talk about more of that in a second, but we should have known that a hard question is not really just gonna be, do you know how to convert a percentage to a decimal, it is more involved than that. And we're gonna see it all over the SAT. And we have to be thinking about it. 
So here is my real prediction. It's a prediction video, so might as well make one. For the March SAT, May, August, June, October, whatever, whenever you take the SAT, every SAT is going to measure a lot of different skills, okay? Many of them are very traditional skills, academic things. Can you read? Do you know how to do algebra? Do you know grammar? Do you have a good vocabulary? But also, they're measuring some big picture skills that we don't really think about very often. Do you have the endurance to take a two-hour test? Do you panic under pressure? And are you easily scammed? Are you gullible? Are you aware of your surroundings? Do you read instructions or do you just assume you know what you're doing and dive right in? Do you fall for traps, okay? Some people really, really struggle with this skill and it is a big part of the SAT. Now, not everything is going to be a trap, all right? So we, we, not every question in the SAT is doing this, is measuring this skill. Sometimes things are hard just because there are a lot of steps or there's hard vocabulary. But if it seems too easy, you should be nervous. Hard questions should not have easy answers. And that's easy for us to think about when we're in like the math section because the questions are organized by difficulty, right? The first question is supposed to be very, very easy, so we shouldn't have to worry about traps there. But as we progress, we're going to notice that the difficulty gets higher. And then by around question 15, we really need to be aware that there are potential traps. And if something feels too easy, odds are good you're falling for the trap. So you've got to really, really be careful and be thinking of that as you go through. You get excited when you get an easy question. You're like, yeah, I'm crushing it. But nope, that might be a trap if you're at question 15 or beyond. Maybe even a little bit before that. But certainly at question 15, like the one I gave you, we would need to be nervous. Um, now, in reading, this is a little bit harder um, because the questions in reading are not really in order of difficulty. They're in order of like type. And so hard questions can be anywhere. And so basically with reading, the, the challenge is we have to always be looking out for traps because we never really know if we have an easy question or a hard one. And especially since if we are falling for a trap, it's going to feel like an easy question. We won't really have a good sense of whether it's genuinely easy or whether we fell for that trap. So we're going to need to be actively thinking about it. And so, yeah, what do we do about this? How do we work on this skill of not getting scammed? Well, basically use SAT strategies. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that every time I explain a question, I'm really focused on strategies and I'm alerting to you to how they help us avoid traps. So we wanna use them that help us and sometimes notice the trap better, like in, in the reading passages, we know certain types of words uh, have a little bit of a trappiness to them. They, they tend to lure us in and scam us, so we gotta be careful of that. Others, like plug points into equations, are more about just avoiding traps entirely by just not even noticing that they're there. The way we solve it completely goes around whatever the trap would be. So the strategies are very, very important. Now, the first thing you gotta do though is be honest with yourself. Did you watch this video because you thought I'd give you some amazing tip to get from an 1150 to a 1580 in just a few minutes? Don't watch YouTube videos that look like this. This is, I can't believe I even made this. I hate this stupid face I'm making. Getting a 1580 on the SAT is a hard question. So we know it's not going to have an easy answer. It's going to take work. And it, that work will pay off, especially if you were thinking about how the traps get integrated into the questions. Now, the best place to start to actually do the work of improving your score like that and to get better at the passages is to watch my strategy series on the main strategies for all sections. Every question type has different strategies and different kinds of traps we need to look out for. But if you're looking for something quick, I have a video on the top 10 SAT traps. It's 10 questions that all involve some kind of trap that comes up again and again. You will see some percentages in there, and uh, it's a great way to just kind of get that overview and a feel for what the SAT is trying to do. I'll put links to all of these things in the description so you can get easy access, but is, to really master this skill takes time. But you'll watch. Whenever I take a practice test, I have videos on that. I'm also thinking about traps and trying to worry about if something is too easy. So when you take a practice test or when you take the real thing, every time a question feels a little too easy for you, picture me doing this stupid face going, oh! <gasps> Is that a trap? Oh no! That way, hopefully, you'll avoid it. And whatever it takes, you know, I'm willing to debase myself for the sake of your score. 
Um, so I am sorry, though, that I tricked you with that thumbnail in this video at the, at the start, but it had to be done. It is an important point to make. It was for your own good. So to get the real info on improving your scores, like I said, go to my channel homepage. There is so much there. My website is really good, too, for a few extra things like vocabulary lists because, yeah, sometimes you just got to do the work of studying lots of words. I would also say just make sure that you recognize in uh, if you need more practice than what's available through the practice tests or the College Board, join my channel membership over there. Uh, you can see every video that I have has a join button. I'll put that link in the description as well. That is more than just subscribing. That is for $5 a month. You get access to hundreds of questions that I have written. That is not a scam. They are real questions. If you want to see some of them and try them out, again, go to that strategy series I talked about. There are going to be links to playlists where at least some of the questions are publicly available so you can see the stuff I've written and, and get those uh, extra questions and video explanations. I hope this was a good reminder of a very important idea before your SAT when Ever you are taking it. And good luck on that test. Keep thinking about those traps. Once again, I am Mike Sattel. And remember, uh, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.